say I was a war hero, and I don't... Yes, you... Okay, you're an Iraq war hero. What do you do for a living? No, 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 no. Get my words right. Now, you listen to my words. Right, in about one more minute, I'm going to hang up on you because you're a boring caller. I'm going to give you one more chance to have a dialogue since you want to be heard. What do you do for a living? What, what, I work for the government. I'm a... <laughs> of course you do. Of course you're a government drone. What else could you possibly do with that attitude? Your boss man in the White House is your boss. You know, well, well... Ah, take a walk. Get off my show. Go call NPR. Call your buddies at National Obama Radio. Back in a minute. Eddie, my love, I love you so far. Yeah, turn it off. I don't want to hear slow dancing. I don't want to hear it. It's over. There's no time for any of it anymore. That's all. It's a new world. Welcome to the new world, world order. If you care to join the show, we have exactly one open line on Rock and Roll Friday. At 855-407-282. Whoever the better rock and roll song that's not about slow dancing, Robert, something a little more exciting for the next break. WVLK Radio, Travis, what's on your mind, Travis? Go ahead, please. Uh, yeah, that, that gentleman that just called in and said that he is a war vet, there is absolutely no way that that dude was a war vet because I have family members that was in the war and they're vets, and they've retired from it and everything else, and they are totally against everything that Obama is doing. They are totally plus for Trump. And that dude, either either he went into boot camp and didn't make it all the way through and graduated. Oh, I don't know what his deal is, but that's, that's, that's garbage. The guy's, the guy's not a vet at all. I can't yeah, say there could There could be veterans who agree with Obama. They're usually the ones who were never in combat. Uh, sometimes they're in the, the legal side of it or the medical side of it or the nursing side of it, the soft social side of it, the supply side of it. Uh, they're very rarely war veterans who fought in combat. I find that most combat veterans know what this government is, and they know that they're not uh, being represented by Obama. They know he's the worst and the most the, the deceitful commander-in-chief imaginable. But let's not talk about this man because it's not going to get us uh, where we want to go. But, Travis, thank you for the support. WJR, Detroit, go ahead. What's your topic? Yes, uh, Michael, that last guy, the last caller, was trying to set you up, discredit you, and I'm tired of that kind of stuff. It's not right. They're running scared. I think actually both parties are running scared. They don't yeah, well, let's go back to the caller for a minute. He was trying to bait me, but did he win? No. Why did he? Why did he lose? Why did he at the end say he was a government worker, which ended the entire argument, because it proved that he was working for Obama. So why would he have said that? There's only one reason. He was on a line with a lot of his government friends listening in, and he didn't want to lie in front of them. Well, I so he th he thought he was having fun. He thought he was winning because it was like one of those high fiving each other. And then at the end, when I said, what do you do for a living? And remember how he wouldn't answer? And then suddenly he said, I'm a government worker. That was the end of the argument. Of course a government worker supports Obama and would find anything the talk show host says offensive. That's their job. They work for it. That's their government. They want a nice, cushy job for the rest of their lives with a fat pension for doing nothing. Because they're moving one piece of paper to the other, and it takes them two hours to do it. The other thing yeah, and, and anybody who does it too quickly gets demoted in the government. Anyone who does it a little too quickly and is too efficient, they get demoted because it threatens the whole structure of lazy bums. Thanks for the call. That's why I didn't even send him a copy of Government Zero, because he wasn't worthy of it. WABC, Rod, what's your topic? Welcome to the Savage Nation. Dr. Savage, I'm a very recently retired police officer. Worked 20, many over 20 years, entire time out in the street. And my, so I'm curious, what's the future of policing in the United States? Who is going to want to be a street police officer anymore? No matter. I'll tell you who. I'll tell you who. The bad people. No matter. Oh, they're going to have. They're going to have. They're going to have a lot of people coming in. Like, you remember the movie The Departed? Yes. You remember Departed with Leonardo Di DiCaprio and uh, I forget the lead. He's really great. I, I'm not trying to denigrate him. I forget who the lead was in, in The Departed, who plays the gang member loosely based on Whitey Bulger, who cultivates a kid and sends him into the Massachusetts State Police, remember that, to be a mole for him? Yes, sir. My friends, 
That's what happens when a nation declines. The good men don't want to take jobs that are going to put their lives at risk because they don't believe that anyone's going to back them up. I played a piece earlier. I don't know if you heard it. Uh, from Philadelphia. Here you had a Muslim shooting a cop last night saying he did it in the name of Islam, pledging allegiance to ISIS. They have it on tape, and the mayor comes out and says it has nothing to do with Islam. Is that what you're talking about, Rod, that kind of thing? Absolutely, and immediately we're tried in the public court of the media, and no matter what you do, you're, you're destined to fail. Uh, in, in the Isn't it interesting that just yesterday on this show I read that the ACLU sued the NYPD and is punishing them with a so-called civilian overseer who will tell them whether or not they can do anything with regard to Muslims because the NYPD under uh, the previous administration was very intelligently doing what the uh, president of France is now doing, which is monitoring mosques, because we all know that that is where the problem will come from if it comes at all. And they sued the NYPD, and they won, and now we see the very next day a cop shot in another city. So what do you think the future is of cops in New York City now? Do you think any one of them would dare stand up for what's right when they know that they're going to be taken down by the communist in the mayor's office? He is an overt, overt, naked. Let's not say communists. It'll offend the government workers out there who are all communists. It'll offend them to hear what they actually are. What do you think big government means? What do you think an overbearing government means? What do you think the loss of liberty means? It means communism. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. News again. I mean, it's going to be hot and heavy. It's a roller coaster. Top of Drudge. Cruz's mother was born in Delaware. End the story. The smear campaign stops now. Breitbart has published the birth certificate for Ted Cruz's mother. Shows that she was born in Delaware on November 23rd, 1934. That establishes her citizenship as U.S. And according to U.S. law, that of her son even though he was born in Calgary, Alberta, on December 22nd, 1970. That's the end of the birth certificate story. And by the way, it's not been doctored, unlike one from Capiolani Hospital in the minds of millions of people. But let's put that aside. You know, it's irrelevant. What's relevant here is the politics of the individual. And when you have a man as deviant as Obama, and again, I use the phrase in the correct manner, he is statistically deviant, in the sense that he doesn't even represent mainstream liberalism, he is far to the left of that. He represent a very he represents a very small minority of those on the Democrat side, the far left side, the far 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 left. That means he's statistically a deviant from the mores even of the Democrat Party. So let's put this aside now, okay? Let's go to the callers. It's open mic to Mike Friday. We're playing rock and roll. We're getting through all of the breaking news, including the birth certificate for Ted Cruz's mother. Let's talk about Cruz's politics uh, and uh, rather than his mother's uh, birthplace. And if you want to talk about Obama's politics instead of his birthplace, be my guest. I've done it for three books now. John WJR, welcome to the Savage Nation. Yes, Michael. I'm uh, very concerned about a potential threat to uh, your uh, continued presence on radio. You alluded to uh, the potential for it uh, with an earlier caller. Uh, if, if and when this administration attempts to ban you from the airwaves based on a um, on the claim that you're uh, uh, promoting hate speech, how are you going to fight that? And also, should that happen, how do you recommend that your your uh, your viewers respond? Or or is this too to, uh, is this something that you'd rather not, I'm sure you've thought about it, uh, or is it something that you'd rather not disclose at the moment? Well, I wouldn't have taken the call from you right now if I didn't want to talk about it, because I've said to you, if Zuckerface, Twitter, and Google 
have made a deal with the potato face of Germany to shut down all conservative reactions to the Muslim rape epidemic that occurred over the weekend. In fact, any commentary about immigrants is now shut down on Facebook, Google, and Twitter in Germany. Who is to stop them from doing it here in America, number one? And number two, what's next? The what's next is voices like mine could be targeted for a shutdown. So, yeah, it's worth talking about. And the question is from you, what would I do about it, right? Yes, absolutely. I'm All right. Concerned. So uh, here's, what I've, here's what I've thought about. I would have certain options at that point. If I wanted to continue fighting for the rest of the years on the earth, I could do so. I could do so on a, uh Internet radio platform, which is certainly not as great as the platform I have now. I could do it on my website. I could do it on a social app that is not Facebook. I had someone approach me about a year ago to create a separate app only for conservatives that people could sign up to where no one could interfere with it, and people could sign up to that. We could do without Facebook, for example, if we needed to. Uh, do I want to do that? No, I would rather do this. But given the tendencies of this maniac in the White House, in the coming months, anything is possible. Don't you think so? I agree, and God forbid it should ever have to come to that, Michael. I'm afraid. I'm well, okay, right? God forbid it. I could also decide that I don't want to do it anymore and just disappear. I know people don't want to hear that. They want to hear that I want to fight until, you know, my voice stops, until God stops, and then that may be the case. But there comes a time in every man's life where he may decide he doesn't want to do it. But I, I'm not there right now. I have quite a good length of time left on terrestrial radio as of right now. And what the government may or may not do tomorrow is a matter of conjecture. I think he'd have to overcome the three to two uh, commission on the FCC. But this guy goes around everything. This guy goes around the FDA, the FCC, does what he wants. So he could do a rule by fiat and say that any speech that we consider to be not conducive to good social behavior, we're going to ban. I mean, you think he might do that? Who would who would stop him? NPR, the people he pays. Well, tell me who would stand. Tell me, look, when I was banned in Britain in 2009, and I got to tell you, I am still banned in Britain. I'm the only member of the American media who is not allowed to enter Britain because of things I allegedly said. This is the land of the Magna Carta, if you can think of this, how, how far they had fallen. And I said, if they could do it in Britain, they could certainly do it here. Now, of course, there's a huge difference. In Britain, they do not have a First Amendment. You're aware of that, right? Well, they don't have a constitution, sure. No, they don't need a constitution. They have a, they have a monarch in, in England. So therefore, they're subject to the whims of the fools who run their country. And that, that's why they've given it away and thrown it away. That's why they let Muslim murderers into the country who say, kill the queen, overthrow the country, and they won't let me. And, and you know, they're trying to ban Donald Trump right now. Are you aware of that? I was. I saw that recently. And it's a they're very... holding a vote. They're holding a debate in the parliament as to whether or not to permit Donald Trump to enter, enter UK. It's hard to believe, isn't it, that things would have come to this, that they would let Muslim haters who espouse the overthrow of England and the imposition of Sharia law, and they want to ban Donald Trump. Well, here's the question. Who came to my defense when I was banned? Virtually nobody in the American media. Virtually nobody. So don't uh, sit there thinking that to be an outcry and a firestorm. There might not be. On the other hand, there might be. I don't know. The times may have changed. I'm going to send you a copy of Government Zero because one thing they haven't stopped yet is the printed word, have they? Think about that. You know, the, the, the Gutenberg press was <clears throat> the beginning of for freedom of the press, the Gutenberg Bible, remember? And for centuries, the greatest avenue of freedom was the written word. And then the electronic media evolved, and uh, Marconi, etc., came along. And then we had a new form of communication, a new form of communication called radio. First the telegraph, then radio, then television, movies, etc. And these are all avenues of communication, aren't they? And I don't know that this government would even dare try to stop uh, this particular form of expression. I don't think they would try it. I think that they have put their toe into the Second Amendment because it's a far more emotional situation with dead people than radio. You understand that?
First of all, there are strong rules in radio. Let me tell you, I know them. I live by them. Very, very strong rules in the world of radio, and I've lived with them for 21 years. 